All right, the next thing that we want to do is I just want to show you a couple more things about uh, targeting various items with jQuery. We're going to go ahead and we're going to, now that you know how to target multiple elements, let's look how we can target multiple properties. So we're already passing on that every other list item is going to have a background color of gray. Let's go ahead and let's add on the another property. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to basically just right under the statement, I can just kind of string these together with multiple jQuery requests. So we're just going to follow the exact same style that we have up above. I'm going to basically be targeting the same thing. So I'm just going to copy what's there, .css. And then in the parentheses, we're going to go ahead and put a different CSS property that we want to specify and this should be surrounded in the quotes so I'll go ahead and type color and let's go ahead and let's uh, make the color have a value of we'll make it a light gray so I think I'm going to use uh, E6, E6, E6 let's give that a try Okay, let's save and we'll just refresh this in the browser. And as you can see, now the list items that have the darker background color now have a new text color applied to them because of the jQuery code that we just basically wrote. We passed on an extra parameter right there for that particular property. So you can just kind of string those together if you want to. So that works really well, but there is another method, kind of like a, a simpler way to repeat, and in, um, instead of repeating the entire jQuery statement with the new values, you can kind of uh, shortcut this and add m multiple properties a little bit differently. This is actually uh, when you're using jQuery to to set multiple properties at the same time, you can use something called object literal. And object literal is a traditional jQuery concept. It basically allows you to provide an easy way of grouping together key value pairs. So for CSS, object literals allow us to match up our CSS properties while matching the CSS values in kind of a neater package. So let's go ahead and let's look at how we can do that. We're going to go ahead and we're going to keep our statement the dollar sign document dot ready function and then we'll be changing this slightly here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm still going to target the ul numbers li even dot css but then let's get rid of all of this for a moment. We're going to put an open parenthesis followed by an open curly brace and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type without wrapping them in parentheses or curly braces or anything like that the actual properties and values that I want to change so we'll use our background color and I'm gonna go ahead and put that inside a single quote followed by a colon this time and then I'll go ahead and I'll put the value that I want so I believe we're using 999 for the CSS value and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to follow this statement by a comma and I'll just go ahead and I'll add the next property and value pairing that I want to go ahead and specify. The little the object literal is wrapped in curly braces with each key separated from its corresponding value by a colon and each key value pair is separated by a comma so you can see that occurring right here. Here's our comma separating our key value pairs and here is the colon that is separating the actual property and value that we're going to be using. And then I'll go ahead and I'll terminate this by, actually I don't even need anything there, but I am going to need to add a, another set of closing curly braces, closing parentheses, and a semicolon and that should take care of it. So using this 
this method, you can specify as many key value pairs as you like. You just separate them with commas. And it's a good idea to kind of lay these out in a little bit more readable manner. So that's why I like to just put extra returns here. Extra returns don't matter. They'll just help you to be able to understand what's going on later on. So this is a good way to write something that's more complex. So let's go ahead and save this and let's just verify that it works in the browser. So when I refresh, we actually get the exact same thing here. Nothing has changed. And if I come back here and we change like the color of the text, let's just change this to red or something like that so we can actually see a difference in the page, you'll see that now when I refresh the text becomes red, like so. So that's that way we can string together multiple commands in a kind of more concise manner. So that's really helpful. And backing up just a little bit, We've been using these single quotes to surround properties and values as well. In, a general, in general, when you're dealing with JavaScript objects, it's kind of unnecessary for the keys to be in quotes. However, for jQuery to actually work properly, any key that contains a hyphen, such as background color, that needs to be wrapped in quotes. It has to be placed in quotes, or you could write it with a camel case is acceptable too, so you could write something like background and then capital C for color, that would actually work. This is actually a key word that's used by JavaScript language. Any sort of key word in JavaScript language, like a float or a class, those have to be written in the single quotes as well. So this can be really confusing. The, what I recommend you doing is, instead of trying to remember which keys need to be quoted and which don't, it, it's fine just to put all object keys in quotes every time, and that's generally what I like to do. I'll just always wrap the object keys inside of uh, the single quotes, and then I don't have to think about, oh, does this use the quotes and does this one not, because that can certainly be a, a little bit confusing. All right, well, congratulations. You've just successfully done a bunch of different stuff in jQuery, and hopefully you found it to be relatively easy and relatively reminiscent of, of using CSS, and certainly a much more powerful way, because when I go ahead and specify it like this, it's really taking advantage of using jQuery instead of having to change my, my CSS and put in a bunch of special classes or something like that. It goes ahead and generates this.